Hello, hello. Thank you for joining me today. This is the Spicy Pecan Podcast. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could. Thank you for coming back to another episode of the Spicy Pecan Podcast. Welcome, and welcome to any new listeners. If you are listening in on uh, Apple Pod, Google Play, feel free to subscribe and leave me a review. If you're checking this out on YouTube, make sure you click that like button and subscribe to the show. Give me a thumbs up. All right. I love hearing from everyone, so if you have any show ideas, you just want to say hey, Feel free to DM me on Instagram or send me an email. Instagram, we are Spicy Pecan Podcast, and email is spicypecanpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Actually, people have been um, hitting up the uh, hitting me up on IG a lot more. Um, I love it. I appreciate that. Um, people have been giving me show topics, um, commenting on my uh, my little um, what are those called? Those little videos. Um, for some reason, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, oh, the reels. Um, people have been com- commenting on my reels and stuff like that. As you guys know, I have been, you know, bouncing around a little bit. Um, last, uh, The last episode, we talked about self-care. Um, so I had taken some time to do that. And in, in that time, I was also um, visiting museums and doing a lot of interesting things that I hadn't done before. I got an opportunity to go to Massachusetts and um, kind of explore and I was able to uncover a lot of black history that I had no idea was there. So I wanted to just go over a little bit of what I got a chance to see and um, just kind of share some of the information. I thought it was really interesting and it just kind of made me realize like there is black, black and brown history everywhere, absolutely everywhere. But Massachusetts specifically, when we think about you know the North, we don't necessarily equate the North to slavery. We're always thinking about you know Mississippi and Kentucky, you know the rise of the KKK and all of the South being the really really racist parts, and that's where you know this history kind of began. That's not really true. Um, you know, in fact, uh, one of the sites that I visited, it, uh, they were letting us know that Salem is the home of the very first American slave ship voyage. So um, just a very, very deep history. I'm not going to be able to go over every single thing, every pivotal person, um, but I just wanted to kind of, you know, give a couple of little um, highlights to, to just a couple of specific things because I did think it was really fascinating and it was one of the reasons why I decided to go to Massachusetts. Um, obviously another reason being that weed is recreational and I wanted to see how the business is set up. What is it like to actually experience, um, you know, going into a dispensary? What are we maybe looking at here in New Jersey as we start to roll some of these things out? So there were, you know, a couple of reasons why I wanted to go. Another was that a friend of mine that lives out there, um, she's constantly sending me beautiful pictures of the beach and um, like the woods and just all the the natural sites um, that are there. So finally got a chance to go. Uh, It was a six hour drive from South Jersey. The drive itself wasn't too bad. You hit some pockets around New York, obviously. Um, But you know, I didn't didn't have any, you know, major issues or anything like that. one of the first things that I did was I stayed in Boston for two days and then I stayed in Salem for a night. In, um, in Boston, I got an opportunity to visit what is called the Royal House and Slave Quarters. That was the first historical site that I had visited. And I'll give you some, um, some details about this place, but throughout this episode, I'm also just going to be sharing pictures and things like that of me in these different places and just the shots um, that I was able to get. So um, if you were viewing this on YouTube, you will be able to see the pictures. If you're listening on the directories, you won't, but you can also feel free to check that out on YouTube when you do get a chance. So the cool thing about the, the Royal House was this was actually one of the very first calls for reparations. Um, there was a, a slave, her name was Belinda Sutton. 
and she was um, she was working for the royal family. The royals were the largest slave holder in Massachusetts at the time. They had sixty slaves. Uh, uh, their wealth came from Antigua. Uh, they traded in sugar, rum, and slaves. So they were already in the business of capturing people. And just to give you kind of a sense, because I know sometimes people, when we talk about slaves being captured and when we talk about slavery and these voyages in general, I want to paint a picture for you. Because I don't want you to think that people, as you know, they would love us to think, that people were hanging in trees and living in caves and, you know, not sophisticated. That is, that could not be further from the truth. In fact, these people were so sophisticated that they were actually recruited. So slaves in Venezuela will have different skills than slaves in Ghana. And white, we're talking about Puritans at this time. So white Puritans knew this. They studied them and they plotted how to kidnap people. So imagine you, you know, um, don't think of it in terms of us having jobs and stuff like that the way that we do now. Think of it in terms of living on homesteads. So imagine you, your family, you're living on your homestead, you're growing your own food, all of your family is there, you have, you know, your community. And um, you're living there, you've been living there for centuries, you know, land was passed down, you have all of these customs in place, um, and you've gotten really good at, you know, growing corn or growing rice or growing sugar, you know, whatever the case is. And these people come into your, your town, your village, and they lay in the outskirts and they watch and they study and they wait for an opportunity to steal you and your family from your land because they see that, wow, this person has the best rice in, you know, whatever. This person has the, the best um, sugar. This person is architecturally brilliant. You know, they're building these amazing dwellings. These people make amazing pottery and are hand weavers or basket weavers. So I don't want you to think that people were just captured as they were swinging from trees and shit. That's not how this went at all. Um, our people are have a very, very deep history of sciences and medicines and we were surviving for thousands of years before we were interrupted. So, you know, I just like to throw that in there because that's one of the things that as I was taking these tours in Boston, it's very, it was very clear to me that these tours were whitewashed. Um, but let me get back into specifically the Royal House um, and slave quarters. That's what it's called if you ever want to visit it. So Belinda was one of the slaves. And the only reason we know as much about Belinda is because when the patriarch died, in his will, he promised that Belinda, one of his slaves, would, she had two options. She can remain a slave under his daughter's care, or she could uh, get her freedom. If she decided to get her freedom, she would be paid 30 shillings for three years um, from his bank account, okay? So obviously, she chose her goddamn freedom. <laughs> like, duh. So she chose her freedom, and she chose, uh, so that means that she would get the money, no. Believe it or not, Belinda actually uh, took this to the courts. She petitioned the courts to see her case after her owner had died. She fought for the money. So, uh, you know, without going into the details, Belinda never got all of the money. She got half of about a year's worth of the money. Um, but the her, her life story, um, Belinda Sutton, her life story is fascinating. Her journey to America was greatly detailed. Now, it's believed that Belinda was uh, illiterate, but as she was going through the trial um, in fighting for her money, she obviously had to give testimony about how she got here and things like that. I haven't gotten a chance to read all of that, but I did get a nice little tip that if you look up, or if you go to the Massachusetts Historical Society, um, that information is actually there. And I did verify, but I didn't get a chance to, to look at it myself. Being in these rooms, 
and and mind you as i'm visiting these historical sites i am the only one one thing about massachusetts and i probably should have mentioned that at first there are not many black and brown people at all there were some indian people there were some um asian people and i did see some like uh uh central uh, central american um you know people um but in most of the places that I was at, I was literally the only black person, the only. And in some places you go to, when you are the only black person and you see another black person, you know, you guys kind of look at each other, you, you know, like the Wakanda or you, you know, what's up, something. Um, it ain't really like that in Boston. It's not really like that in Massachusetts, at least, you know, from what I saw. But anyway, so as I'm going on the tour, um, it was so interesting because I saw that, and this didn't just happen at one tour, it happened at two of them. Um, as they're talking about Belinda's piece, because you know, they go through these, these rooms, they show you where the slaves slept, they show you the difference between the dwellings, the slave dwelling looks so much different than the actual house. They talk to you about how these people accumulated wealth and it's in such a watered down way, you know, you're not getting like, what I was getting. What I was getting was I'm just imagining actual people working. Actual people day in, day out. Because it's not like you get a vacation. It's not like you get the weekends off. This is day in, day out labor. Um, so being in these rooms and being like the only black person, you're going to get stared at. So in the tours that I'm taking, I'm literally being stared at by people because they're getting to the pieces of where they talk about how black people are involved. So I just want to give you kind of a, a little bit of a feeling of, you know, what it's like in Massachusetts. So that was extremely interesting about Belinda Sutton and the Royal House. Um, so I wanted to share that. Now, we, most people know boss or most people know Massachusetts for Salem. Um, the Salem witch trials, Halloween, all of that. Salem itself is a beautiful town. Boston too. A lot of these downtown areas in Massachusetts, while there is a homeless population, I didn't see a lot, but there were homeless people, um, it is very clean. I mean, they put a very big investment on making sure that things are manicured and cleaned and there's recycling going. And that was the one thing that I was super impressed by. Um, there's a lot of shopping to do in um, all throughout Massachusetts, but specifically Boston and Salem, and I would probably say like Nantucket, um, very touristy, you know, kind of places. So you're going to get a lot. I mean, like, despite being the only one, luckily I had a friend out there that, you know, she, she took me under her wing and made sure I was good. Um, but it, it really is a very beautiful, beautiful place. There's a lot of great food. There's a lot of things to do because it is very touristy in, um, you know, in the towns that I visited. So diving into more of the Salem things. Um, downtown Salem is very beautiful. And you can imagine, you know, you got the Harry Potter stuff. You got the cauldrons. You got the, the different gyms and um, crystals and you got tarot cards and just all of it all of it and it's very fascinating to look at I did um, I did like a horror tour um, where they just you know there's like these figures of vampires and werewolves and they talk about all the different mythical figures um, within like you know the horror the horror world or whatever um, but specifically, I wanted to hit on the Salem Witch Trials because I know that we did learn about it in school, but I know a lot of people, you know, it floated right back out of their head. But I just, this is the thing about, about being black. We have to realize that we are weaved in absolutely everything. There is nothing that we have not had our hands in. Nothing. Going through these tours I've realized that there was there was at least one black prominent figure in almost every every place every tour that I went there was always one black prominent figure that changed the course of the story like with the Salem witch trials I had no idea that the Salem witch trials was actually kicked off by a black woman a slave to tuba I encourage you I'm gonna leave some links um, 
in the description of the video i encourage you if you love history um dive deeper into some of this stuff because some of this stuff is so interesting i mean my memory's bad and i didn't want to write like a million notes and i really like for people to discover things on their own you know my job is just to kind of put the bug in your ear um but uh just going over the salem witch trials just for a little bit 1690 to 1693 very short amount of time for the amount of information and uh the amount of for lack of a better word fanfare and fascination about it you know this was a very very short blip blimp in time um but the result of the salem witch trials were 20 people were found guilty 19 people were hung one person was pressed to death pressed to death um and some people ended up dying in jail the way that this kicked off, and I'm going to give you the best account that I can kind of decipher based on the tour that I took, which was not very good, and then the information that I found out afterwards. But you have to remember, they didn't write about us. White people did not write about slaves. We were the unseen. You know, we were not supposed to be seen. You were supposed to do your job and be in the shadows, be needed as soon as you're needed, but not be in my way, in my world. Even looking at the slave quarters, you can see this is something, it's like, it's almost like they, the slave owners didn't want to, didn't want to acknowledge that it was there and the way that these things were built. It's like a blemish that they kind of just wanted to tuck away. Anyway, so John Paris was the he was basically the residential preacher pastor reverend of salem village and he came um to salem from barbados um that's where his you know family kind of uh, accumulated some wealth there was like a farm there that was failing he decided to move to salem village because being a pastor being the pastor of the village had a, a much better financial gain so he goes there with his wife, his daughter, uh, or his, his wife, um, a niece, and some kids. Um, I know for a fact that he definitely had at least one daughter. Um, John Paris also um, attended Harvard. And I'm going to mention Harvard a little later on. Um, but just keep that in mind. So this guy is the pastor of the village. His daughter and two other girls start developing some weird symptoms supposedly they went into this park they wanted to um you know see their futures Divin divination was totally banned um puritans did not want uh you to be able to see the future you know all of that it was totally banned so these little girls like teenagers do like young people do they go into the woods they play their little games the thing at the time was they thought that if you put an egg in a glass, you could see your future. Remember that a lot of the details of this case has been lost in the in a lot of you know these uh, books and movies and all. A lot of this stuff has been lost, so take this with a grain of salt. But this is the folklore. They go into the woods. They do this little experiment. A couple of days later, they start getting some weird symptoms. One of the girls starts twitching really weird. She says it feels like people are pinching her, um, doesn't understand what's happening. They're going into fits, these girls. Further down the line, um, this starts to cause some hysteria, obviously. And the pastor, after um, trying to prey on it, they do another experiment. It's called a cake experiment, a, a switch cake experiment, um, where they give a dog cornmeal and the urine of these young ladies blood since they were afflicted they made a cake of it they fed it to a dog and supposedly the dog was supposed to sniff out who was responsible for possessing these girls all crazy right none of this shit makes sense i personally think the girls had like sh uh shingles or something <laughs> it's something but anyway no one can figure out what's going on with them this is the 1600s you know, obviously, they don't have all kinds of testing and things like that. So anything unknown is crazy and weird. 
somehow uh one of the girls finally one of the girls that were afflicted finally confesses that Tatuba and four other people or Tatuba and two two women were actually involved in the fact that they were possessed I'm not going to go into everything because already, as you can see, and this is me watching several videos and reading several articles of me trying to explain this back to you. It's very scattered and kind of all over the place. Tutuba ends up being the star witness to all of this. Somehow they get this woman to confess and she starts spilling names. She says that there's a, a tall gentleman that made her signed the book of life and it's actually the book of the devil you can read actually um the testimony as we know when we are on trial and we're the only one and it's a bunch of us we don't know if she was told to confess we don't really know what the the actual story was what this woman actually had to do to try to survive from being accused of being a, a witch and obviously she's an indigenous woman so there's already kind of this idea that you're you have this uh, witchcraft you know within your your history and things like that so no one really knows exactly what um, you know ended up happening to Tatuba but uh, she wasn't she was never she wasn't murdered or anything like that because of her involvement um, it just blew me that this entire thing this Salem witch trials that I've been hearing about all my life was kicked off by a black woman and I never heard that piece it would have never happened if it wasn't for Tutuba and them getting her to confess whatever however that happened you know it gave them all the ammo that they need needed to start hanging people and prosecuting people and all of that so just wanted to put that um, bug in your ear I thought that that was really, really, really fascinating. Um, and we talked about Belinda Sutton. So I want to talk to you just very briefly about uh, Harvard University and just using it as an example of a lot of very old institutions. There are not many old institutions. Actually, you know what? I'm going to be bold and I'm going to probably say that there are no old institutions that have been around since the establishment of America that we did not build, that we did not have some involvement in, that we were not involved, nothing. Harvard has had land donated to them from slaveholders from, uh, from the Massachusetts area. They have had millions of dollars given to them because of the trading of slavery, because of the labor that came from slavery. Harvard specifically has been a huge benefactor. In fact, there would be no Harvard Law School if it wasn't for Royal Jr. And I visited Isaac Royal Jr.'s house, um, or, or the Royal's house. That was the first, the first place that I talked about. This guy made all of his money from slavery. All of his, well, not all of his money, but there he, you know what, actually scratch that. He made all of his money from slavery because it wouldn't have been possible without, without the labor. So he made all of his money from slavery. When he died, he gave land and money to Harvard University. That, was, that helped them establish the law center. It helped them get law professors. And in fact, before 2016, the Harvard Law Shield was based on the Royal Family Shield blows your shit right this is like if this doesn't bother you i feel like this show isn't for you like you should really just probably stop watching my show because this stuff if we are not invested in learning about our actual history if we're not invested in really understanding and making the case that we are owed then i don't know what we're really doing i don't know what we're really doing we can protest all we want. You know, we really can. And we have been and we will continue to. But we need to follow the money. We need to follow that. Because there is nothing, there is no old institution in this country that we have not been involved in and that probably wouldn't exist if it wasn't for us. 
So that's the show this week. <laughs> um, I did want to mention, um, thank you guys so much for voting on the, you know, remember when I was talking about uh, how I wanted to cut my hair and stuff like that? Bam, I did it. So, and I'm loving it too. I'm going all natural. Um, I've been using, oh, if anybody has any tips on any natural hair care products, let me know. Um, you know, I really want to get into it. It is hot today. You see me sweating? I got a little bit of a tan. I don't know if you can like, oh, all right, getting a little extra. I did get a tan. Um, I got the, the haircut that you guys voted on and I'm loving it. I need a little fresh, uh, a fresh um, uh, touch up. But listen guys, thank you so much for enjoying the show. I wanted to sneak this in here because, um, you know, I really did have a fantastic time in Massachusetts and I wanted to, I want to continue to do this. I want to go places and I want to, um, you know, describe my experience and stuff like that. I'll get a lot tighter at doing it and a lot better at describing. Um, it's just, you know, this, sorry about that guys. I had a little bit of technical difficulty with some audio, so I do apologize. Um, but what I was basically saying is with this stuff, because you know, we're talking about the 1600s and things like that. Um, there's so many conflicting information and I just try to place it, you know, in my rational mind in these days. Um, so I do apologize if any of that was, you know, a little blurred or confused. But before we head out, actually, I did remember, I did want to just share, um, you know, two little instances that happened while I was there. So at some point I was waiting for my friend to get off of work and I was vacuuming my car, my car close to um, this beach. I drove up to the beach, you pay like $10 to get into the beach. Um, and it was like a campground, lake, beach, whatever. I don't know, I had never been there. My friend wasn't with me so she couldn't give me the lowdown. So I go in to, um, you know, go um, and the, this gentleman, he greets me and he's like, um, you know, it's $10 or whatever. I didn't have cash on me. So I asked if you could do credit card and you couldn't do credit card supposedly. So I leave. There's like this um, sanded area where I guess there's um, overflow parking for the beach. So I park there waiting for my friend to get out. I decide, you know what, let me get some of the sand and dirt because I had been running around almost like every day even before i got to boston i had something to do i was just going everywhere so i had sand all kinds of crap so i have a vacuum in my car decided to start cleaning my car popped open the doors um it is you know recreational like use so clean my car doing my thing um so i um i'm doing that there's a gentleman that comes into the parking lot um with his lexus didn't think anything of it he parks alongside me on the left-hand side of me. He swoops in and his car is like catty corner to my car, right? Never looks at me, never looks at me, okay? So I'm seeing him and I'm vacuuming, thinking nothing of it. Um, I'm looking at him. He never looks directly at me. He looks straight ahead, okay? Don't think anything about it. A couple minutes later, he does the exact same move on my right hand side loops loops around caddy corner to my car like this just stares right ahead does nothing now clearly at this point i know what's up black girl out here what the fuck you doing why you here what are you doing here you we know we know we already know what the deal is with the which what are you doing here that type of shit now, clearly, I'm not going to, that is going to take a little more to move me. Um, it's going to take a little more to compel me to leave. And actually, now I'm more invested in being a dick. Um, that's, that's, I like, if, that's how I react, you know. When people do stuff like that, it actually makes me want to be even more ghetto. It makes me want to be even more of what you think that I am because now I'm pissed. So anyway, that was one instance that I went through. Another um, another two instances were very similar. They were customer service instances. Again, I was the only one in the restaurant, the only one at the hotel. Um, get to the hotel, I spent really good money on the, the hotel that I stayed in in Salem. The hotel was not packed, okay? This was not a very busy time. I purposely stayed a little bit of the weekend, a little bit of the week, because I didn't want to hit a whole bunch of traffic with people. 
So hotels basically bare. There's not even anybody even on the rooftop deck. Um, I just so happened to, I got like a junior king suite. You know, I wanted to treat myself or whatever. Get into the room. Room is cute. Go into the bathroom. The toilet paper hanger, uh, the toilet paper holder is like hanging off the wall. And it looks like someone tried to half-ass spackle job it or whatever. Now I'm thinking to myself, okay, there's not many people in this hotel. I chopped it up with the girl in the front. I know that this couldn't have been the only option as for my room. Oh, forget to tell you, the view is like shit. Like I'm... I'm viewing another building and parking lot. Like it was horrible. Meanwhile, I'm in a, a hotel that is in the center of everything. So I know that there's amazing views here. So I get a dud room. Okay, fine. We go to go get some food. Um, and it was quick food too. It was like, uh, it was uh, Boston hot dogs, which was really good. It's actually kind of a staple out there if you get a chance to check that out. Um, the Oyster House is another place that you may want to check out. And um, Mike's Pastries, um, that place was packed. I didn't even get a chance to, to get there. But um, went to, to the hot dog spot, waited for a while. For a hot dog, I was kind of annoyed by how long I waited. And then when I got my food, I decided to walk to a park to eat my food. I didn't want to eat it there. Open up the bag. My fries are splattered all across the bottom. I was given no napkins. There's no condiments in here. My hot dog is sloppy as hell. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of room in the bag. I mean, the way that the bag was handed to me was the way that I opened the bag. I didn't go very far. So it was little things like that that I can say you're probably going to experience, um, you know, being like the only one. Now, obviously, if you go in more like probably if you go for Halloween, it probably wouldn't be as bad because you have even more people there and uh, there's probably more of us there and it's more of a, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't be doing anybody any favors if I didn't keep it real about my actual experience there. So, you know, my suggestion, partner up with, with one of your white allies, <laughs> you know, possibly someone who lives there, because that's exactly what I did. My friend was blonde hair, blue eyed, um, and just, she is like the wokest person ever. Um, I lucked out with her. I'm so happy that, you know, she's my buddy or whatever, but, um, and, you know, shout out to her for taking me around and really, really taking the time to, you know, be my tour guide. I certainly appreciate it. Um, that's, I think that is everything this week. I think that's everything that I wanted to cover. Again, I apologize for the audio. Um, there was a little issue in the beginning, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed the pictures and videos. Next week, we have a really cool show. I invited a comedian to join me. We're going to talk about some current events and things like that. So hopefully we'll get some laughs. And I have some really cool stuff planned as far as local things. I want to promote more local artists, um, you know, that are in South Jersey and Philly. So if you know anyone, feel free to suggest. And as always, if you have any show topics, you have any feedback about the show, feel free to email me at spicypecanpodcast at gmail.com or contact me on Instagram at Spicy Pecan Podcast. I love you guys. Stay spicy and be blessed. Thank you for listening to Spicy Pecan Podcast. This is a wonderful new media production.